Hello, and welcome to What's Bubbling a Zim. I'm inventor Dan Zen, and in this bubbling, we're going to take a look at what's new in Zim 9.5.0, and that is Zim Layer. Woohoo! Check this out. So what Zim Layer is, is a container that has transform tools that allows you to transform but then also go into the container and transform those objects. Cool, huh? So before you couldn't do that, because if you've turned on the transform of a layer, for instance that, you can't get to the things inside. So what we've done is uh, provided this title bar system of layers. And indeed, it looks like a title bar system. If we turn off these ghosts, there they are. So there's the outer layer. Here's that layer. And you can still operate in sort of without the ghost showing. The ghosts kind of keep things um, organized, perhaps. All right, so we've got these title bars that allow us to now resize the container or not resize the container and let us into its contents. These title bars move around with the layer like so, but they can get docked on the side, which is kind of cool. Now, if we want, we can dock all of these things. We can't dock it like that, but if we pick it up like so, then it ends up being docked like that. And we could drop these at the side or something, layer one, layer, uh, layer zero, layer one, layer two, and now have a menu system. Oh, I want to operate that. Oh, I want to operate this one. Or indeed, pick it up and put it wherever you want, like so. Cool, huh? If you want it docked or snapped back on there, you can drop it on its registration point, like so, or double click it, and then it pops back. Like so you've got to watch with double clicks. They don't work on all devices necessarily, so never count on them. Very cool, huh? Now the ghosts, by the way, if we turn off all the layers, uh, there's the layers hidden. Now how we did that is we specified a container for these title bars. And in doing so, we put the container for the title bars above the content, and that means that the title bars will always be above the content, uh, which is handy as well. Also, it means if we put these in a separate container, on their own, if this one is selected, we can go into this and select it. If that weren't the case, if we just throw everything on the stage, what happens is this it gets put over top of that, which means we couldn't select that. It just all moves around with this kind of cursor like this. So we'll see that when we dig into the code a little bit. Oh, lots of things on the go here, huh? And what else is there? Um, I suppose that's pretty well it for the content, I guess, but that's really neat, huh? Isn't that cool? Let's um, dig into some code then, shall we? <clears throat> Maybe something else will come up. Here we are in Zim 9.5.0. You see that okay? There's the content container added to the stage, and here is the layers container. Uh, the layers container, we have this title bar going across the top there. See the title bar? So we made the layers container a little bit smaller, and that's nice because now it bumps up against the container. It's locked in, in there for us automatically, which is cool. Here's a layer. And we're supplying the width, the height, what the title bar says, and the title bar's container. That is indeed this one right here, the layers. We're going to look at a bunch of other parameters, but you can see as well the layer could be uh, simplified, I suppose. 300, 400, say layer 1, add it to the layers, so there's traditional parameters. And located at 50-50 within layer 0. Then we're adding a circle to that layer. It's just like a container. We're making another layer, much the same. Uh, we're positioning that layer in, in layer 0, and we're using the true there, which means on the right-hand side, 50. 
Then we're taking two circles and adding those to layer two. Setting the transform visible to false on that. Uh, if you have a transform manager here, like so, a new transform manager, layer zero, layer one, there's the layers added and the circles added, as well as an ID, then it will remember all of the things. Shall we take a look at that? It not only will it remember it, but we'll also set those transforms to not be visible to start as well. So we refresh that, and if I move this layer down here, and that layer, let's make this smaller, like that, and then I refresh. Cool, huh? Refresh. So that can be very handy. All of that stuff is remembered for you. If you want to clear that, you can use the clear persist there. Why don't we take a look at some of the parameters? There's background color. Well, if we turn these on, you can see them better. We'll go right to the selected color. So this bunch right here is all background colors and border widths and stuff like that. Um, very traditional within Zim. And we refresh. Oh, let's save it. Save it and refresh. There they are. Cool, huh? Now, uh, this one's skinny. That's actually part of the transform controls. So we're going to have to set that or in a different way, possibly. But uh, this one we managed to set like so. And that looks great. It looks like kids would enjoy moving that around if you've got something more simple, etc. Right underneath here, if we want to change things with respect to the transform controls, then we can pass in a transform object. This is an object literal, or configuration object, that would be passed to Zim transform if we're transforming a circle, circle.transform, and we pass whatever we want in there. Because there's a whole bunch of parameters that we can do, such as do we want to be able to rotate it? Do we want to show the registration? Here is the, the actual transform controls border color of white and border width, etc. So let's take a look at that. If we refresh, and now we select the layer. So that purple one actually looks like <laughs> didn't work. <laughs> let's save it again. What's going on with my head? Huh? I just want to show you. There we go. And refresh. Now it's a similar big white. I would probably swap those around. Maybe this is not selected, and that is selected. <laughs> Whatever. But you get the idea. That allows us to change things about the transforming. Oh, by the way, uh, note that there's no registration point thing. This is the, the registration point thing right there. No registration point thing. And if we select it, we have no rotation. Whereas here, we have rotation. OK, so next then. Uh, the anchor. Let's turn all this stuff off. I'll go back to the traditional one. If we don't want to anchor, remember we're only operating on layer zero here. If we don't want to anchor, I can pick that up. Ah, oh, there we go. It's not. It's not anchoring. Layer one still anchoring, and indeed layer two is still anchoring but the uh, layer zero doesn't anchor. So you may not want to anchor, it's up to you. I like the anchoring. It's a little strange, but it's nice once you get used to it. If you don't close, like that, refresh, and select that. Oh, uh, it has no close. This one has a close, that one has no close. But just be careful, if you make this too big, then you may not be able to unselect. The whole thing would be selected. So that could be a problem. Or not very easy. And, and by having this, it allows you to close the selection easily. And then you can set the title bar width and whether you want the title bar draggable. Can you figure out why we might want the tag title bar not to be draggable? Right now it's not draggable and that's kind of annoying. <laughs> uh, 
but if we had it anchored, oh, uh, by the way, it won't, it won't, it won't anchor if it's not draggable, because you might never be able to get it off the edge. So why would you want it draggable false? Well, that would be if we position the title bar initially, for instance, uh, that would layer zero, and let's position it at zero, zero in its container, and we refresh. Now it's positioned at zero, zero in its container, uh, but we can't drag it away from there. And what that does is it allows us to have a menu system here where all of these could be anchored up there and you could have a menu system. Uh, just watch that check. That might be one reason not to have the check mark there. We thought about if we anchoring at the top, make the check marks go. You see what's happening there. Check marks going over top of layer one. So you have to sort of space it out like that or indeed anchor them along the side like so. Might be handy to have them all the same. <laughs> <laughs> All the same width at that point. Okay, but well that would give you a menu system along the side that cannot be dragged. All right, that's how you would use those things. How is everybody doing? Ooh, woo! Isn't this cool? All right, we're back to normal. What else do we have in here? We have a timeout. Uh, one of the issues we came out with, the layer doesn't have the transforms right away, so you have to wait for them to be added to the stage, and then they get the transforms. There's no direct event to find out if something is added to the stage. There's a direct event to find out if something is added to a container, but not to the stage. So you have to pull that, which means there's milliseconds involved in the polling there. And there's a bit of a delay. So we can't use the transform controls property, which allows us to access various things on the transform until they're created. So here's an example of uh, initially, if you need something immediately right after, although this is a really bad example, you don't want to show the transform controls only after one second. Here's why I'll show you. Refresh here. See what happened? There's the transform controls now showing, but it didn't actually activate the layer. Now the layer is activated. So there's two things. There's the transform controls and then there's the layers controls. So how you would what you would want to do if you wanted all of that activated would be to set the layers uh, to toggle the layer, which would look like this. Transform control has a toggle too, and we could have used toggle there. We were just testing this toggle. So now we're saying toggle layer two. Why don't we do it after a second? After a second, the whole layer is toggled. Toggle is, is quite easy to use. Toggle will uh, just toggle it <laughs> back and forth. That's one thing. So if we say after two seconds, toggle it again. Refresh. There it toggles on. There it toggles off. So if you don't want that though, you can always say toggle true. No matter what it is, toggle true and then it will always go on. So this will turn on and then stay on. See that? Or we can always toggle it false. If you put in false there, then it would always turn it off. And because toggle is so nice for things that toggle back and forth, because you can not care about whether it's on or off, just toggle it and, and do the opposite, or you can specifically care. Because that's such a nice system, in Zim, we've now put the toggle anywhere that something can be toggled, we've implemented that system. So there's other con con components out there that also have toggle. And indeed, that's what we're using here for layer. There's also a toggled property to tell you whether it's toggled or not, but you don't usually have to worry about that. All right, well, let's comment those ones out and move along here. We can find out, we have events to find out if something is showing or hiding, the transform show, transform hide events. I won't bother showing that. What else are we doing here? We talked about the transform manager. Here is a bunch of stuff. What's going on here? We position the bar. Oh, that's right. So if we position a bar like layer two, let's position layer two again. How about at 30, 30 to start? Then what this is doing is it's resetting that title bar to snap it back onto the layer. So this will put it at 30, 30. This will put it back. 
This then toggles the layer. Uh, we don't want to toggle. Uh, moves the layer. This moves the layer. 200. Oh, well, we've seen the toggle already. That's why we didn't want it. And if we move the layer, we need to resize it. So let's see what all this looks like. Refresh. So it started off with layer two over here. See it? There it is over there. And then it snapped it back on, and then it moved the whole thing over. And now we can pick that up and operate it just fine. Cool, huh? But if we don't resize layer two after moving it, here's what happens. And this is the same with any of the transforms. See that? We moved it, but the transform stuff didn't go with it. And indeed, if we select this over here, it pulls everything back. It thinks that's where it's supposed to be. So if we manually move something, such as this, or setting the X property or Y property, etc., then we need to resize the layer so that it all works properly. Same with any transform, as mentioned. But obviously, using the transforms on the layer, fine, then resizes it automatically. Well, that's most of this. this is coming along pretty well, huh? Here's the checkbox up top. There's the rectangle and the label up top. Here's the checkbox. Really, the checkbox is quite simple. It's really layers.visible is equal to e.target.checked. Almost as simple. I'll comment that out and you'll see it could have been that simple. Here's a refresh. So now uh, the layers toggle. <laughs> Darn, but what are these like dashed lines still doing here? You may indeed want those. They don't really do much. They just show you where the container is and we can't we can't change the container anymore because we uh, have no longer have the layers available to us. There they are. Now we can change them. If we want, we don't have to. Okay, so um, that's that. The ghosts are part of the transform control. So the ghost outline there, we had a choice of putting them inside or outside. Uh, sorry, inside layers, or have, have the layers control them, or put them as part of the transform. And we thought, hey, you know, maybe that people don't want to use the layers, even if they're just transforming something here and turn off the transform, they might want to see a ghost that sort of indicates that you can transform. So we added them to the transform controls. So how we're dealing with that then is we're looping through the layers. And uh, you see why it's handy to have layers and have all the title bars go into a container called layers, because we can turn them visible or we could remove them or whatever we want to do. We can loop through them. Here we are looping through them. So here we are looping through the title bar or the layers. And each time we get the title bar, then if the layers are visible, we are saying title bar dot layer dot transform controls dot show ghosts. So we're going, the title bar has a layer property that says what layer it belongs to. Then we go to its transform controls and show the ghost because remember that ghost outline is part of the transform controls and vice versa and so forth. Then same with turning off and on the ghost. Woot, woot, woo. So that's pretty cool, huh? Uh, I should probably show you some of the docs for all of that then if we go to the Zim site under docs. There's the updates. Oh, by the way, this, this whole thing is available in the updates for 9.5.0. So there it is right there. zimjs.com slash explore slash layer. And you can get that code. What else is going on in here? Oh, the emitter. Yeah, there was an improvement to the emitter um, at this location here. Shall we take a peek? Oh, right, this is the first one of the 2018 summary of how many people see Zim site per day. If we go to the next one, this one had the emitter. Now the old emitter used to, when I, if I moved the emitter, every single particle would move with it. And so it would look kind of silly. This one's uh, more natural where once it emits, so we now are emitting to a separate container. So when you move the emitter right here, it, um, it uh, doesn't move that whole container. It just starts emitting at the, the correct location in the container. 
Uh, cool, huh? So that's much nicer. This is how many, how much conversation we've had on Zim. This is a visualization, I'm calling them interactive information, like infoactives. And this is how many, how much conversation we've had there. So if if you're still here, heck, you should um, definitely be in to the Zim Slack and come and talk with us. <laughs> Say hello, ask questions, answer questions. You can help me out because I'm half of these. <laughs> half of these are me. <laughs> All right. Oh, are we almost there? But it's a neat visualization, isn't it? It gets you the idea. Wow, have we really done that many conversations? That's that's cool. So I like that. Even though it's taken a long time, it hopefully gives you a, a good idea of what's going on. And there we are, 6,500. Woot, woot. And you can go on through. There's more stats and stuff on these info actives there as well. Uh, good. And then back in the docs, as mentioned here in the docs, if you type in layer, enter, there you are. You've got layer is just, it's in the components here under window and or beneath window. There's the layer class with the example, very similar to what we went through, as well as all the parameters. <laughs> Did you love that? Did you read that? All the parameters and so forth, and then come the rest of the components. Okay, we'll add this bubbling video right in here so you can refer to that there as well. This has been what's bubbling at Zim. I'm Inventor Dan Zen. There's more updates there too, but that was the main one in 9.5.0. Uh, coming up, I think we're going to create a little, a little component called a, a, not an alert, what was that, a tip, like a tool tip thing. And also uh, an accordion is on the way so that we can take those nice new lists that we have and expand the lists open and shut in a traditional accordion. That will probably be in 9.6.0 and we'll see you then. Ciao.